Let's go. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hey, what's up? My name's Anna. I'm going to be a junior in college this fall at WVU, aka West Virginia University in Morgantown, West Virginia, but I'm actually going to be studying abroad this year in England. I'm also going over there to travel for three weeks solo all around Europe. If you want to watch all those vlogs, please subscribe. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you guys a little bit about some more WVU college tips. I first off want to put a little disclaimer. I apologize for how unoriginal my backgrounds have been. I am currently living in my mom's house, which is not ideal. I'm working with what I got. It's gonna get better once I move, which will be happening in like a month, but for now this is what we're working with. But anyway, today I'm gonna be doing another WV video. If you're not here for WV videos, I'm really sorry. I've just had so many requests for these types of videos. So I promise you I'll be having some other cool original content coming later. So today's video is gonna be kind of a mishmash of a bunch of random tips. I just kind of was brainstorming what I would want to know if I was a freshman again coming into college. I apologize in advance for how all over the place this is gonna be, but let's get right into the video. The first thing I'm gonna be talking about is how to make friends. It can be a little bit confusing. A lot of college advice videos are just gonna say, well, you just gotta say hi, but like that's not really realistic. So here I am to tell you how. My first number one tip for this is to keep your door open in the dorms. I left my door open 24 seven while I was home, of course. It's basically like a sign of you say, hey, I'm cool, come talk to me whatever. I had a lot of people that would just walk by and look into my room and just kind of start a conversation by saying, your room is so cute. I love your rug or I love your bedspread or whatever. That really got us talking and I've made a few friends just by people complimenting my room. So another tip is if you see people with their doors open, a good way to start a conversation is to just compliment like their bedspread. It's basically a sign that that person wants to talk to people and wants to make friends. It's a foolproof way to make friends. I absolutely recommend you do that. So a Another tip I have, and this is how I met pretty much everyone in my dorm. For the first like month of school, I would go around in maybe the late afternoon and I would take a couple of my friends that I had already met that live like next to me or whatever, and we would go and knock on pretty much everyone's door. We would go and say hi to our neighbors or other people down the hall. If their doors were open, we would just peek our heads in and say like, hey, what's up? Like, I'm Anna, I live down the hall, just wanted to introduce myself, blah, 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 whatever. Even if they had their doors closed, a lot of times we would just knock on their doors because some people just don't know to keep their doors open. So a couple of my friends and I would just make our way down the hall and back and knock on people's doors, get their Snapchat, and you're good to go. Bam, you have a new friend. Another tip to kind of further those friendships is if you're going out that night or something like that, invite them to your pregame because that way it's like not you just kind of walking up to them and being like, hi, okay, bye. It's you like inviting them to something so you have a legitimate reason to be there going along with that leads me into my next tip I recommend that you get as many people's snapchats as you can this was probably the best thing that I did to make friends during my freshman year whenever I met anyone new in any situation I got their snapchat snapchats funny because you can like post something on your story and people will swipe up and be like hey like that's cool or like oh you remember pregame like where it's at you know it's not as creepy as getting people's numbers but it's still a way to like keep in contact with people a few places you can get snapchats is parties if you meet people at a party and you get their contact info and they say like oh let's hang out blah 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 you might think that because they're intoxicated or because they're at a party that they were just being polite but really they're in the same situation as you and they do want to hang out so the next day if you get somebody snapchat while you're out just be like hey so nice meeting you last night I had so much fun do you want to go grab lunch or something and that way you're continuing that relationship and like making a friend with them. Another tip I have that I did, I'm not sure if this is around anymore, but I would definitely check. I know that there are locations where you can make like group stories on Snapchat for that location. So for example, I lived in Dadisman my freshman year and we had a Dadisman group story and you could basically add whatever Snapchats you wanted to it and everyone in Dadisman could see it. So I, for example, a post that I would put on 
down there is pregame at room 57 or something like that. That's something that I would definitely recommend doing. Another tip I just thought of is buy a whiteboard. Buy a whiteboard for your door in your dorm. It is so much fun. Buy a bunch of markers because people will steal your markers, I will say. Whiteboards are such a good way for people to write down their Snapchat or their Instagram or whatever. We'd write like funny sayings on there, like word of the day or advice of the day. Or we would say like drop your Snapchats, drop your socials and people would drop it. We'd add them and be like, hey, thanks for writing on my door or whatever. They're so much fun and yeah, I could not recommend it enough. Another general tip I have that might seem kind of obvious, but I just want to reiterate it is just invite people to hang out. If you got their Snapchat, like I said, at some kind of party, or if you just knocked on their door one day and got their contact info, just text them and invite them to get lunch with you or get lunch with your group of friends. Everyone is in the same position as you. It's the, one of the most friendliest places I've like probably ever been in my life because everyone's on the same page and you all just want somebody to invite you to hang out or invite you to lunch. My last tip for the whole friend section of this video is to not limit yourself to one group. As your freshman year goes along, groups are going to start forming of friends and you might feel like because you've hung out with this certain group for a while that that's just your group of friends and it's set in stone, but I would recommend to purposely go out and hang out with different groups groups of people constantly and build relationships in different areas just because you met a group of friends that say are your neighbors in your dorm or something like that doesn't mean that they're the friends for you. That kind of happened with my situation. I just happened to live next to this big group of girls and we were like best friends but in reality I didn't share anything in common with them. We didn't have the same ideals. We didn't mesh and I am glad that we're not friends anymore just because they were not the right people for me. They weren't going to further me in my career. We didn't have the same ideals like I said, it's not that they're bad people or anything. It's just that we just weren't like right for each other. I know it sounded like I was dating them, but like, you know, with friends, you, you need to make sure you're careful about who you hang out with. Don't ever stop making friends. Don't ever stop reaching out to other people and hanging out with other groups. I'm one of those people that has multiple, multiple groups of friends. Even now in college, I have like my record label friends and then I've got my dance friends and then I've got my school friends and then I've got my partying friends and I have all these different groups and it's so much better that way because you don't get tired of people, number one, because you're hanging out with so many people and you get so many more opinions and perspectives on life and if something does fall through with one group, you're not friendless. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into the important stuff, AKA the actual school stuff, you know, the reason why you're there. But I'm gonna give you some tips so that you can balance your social life with your school life. I've always been a pretty academic person and it's been relatively easy for me to balance these things, but I know for some people it's not. So I'm gonna share with you some of my best tips to get great grades. So my first piece of advice for you is note taking. This can be really intimidating because for a lot of people who just come out of high school, you didn't really have to take notes or it's just not the same because lectures are a lot different from like high school curriculum. My first tip is to highlight all of the important terms or points that you need to remember for tests. So when you go back to study, you know that that's what you need to remember. The second tip I have, I have lived by. It has saved me. It's what got me the grades that I have. I would recommend studying 20 minutes before bed and 20 minutes right before your test. I have done this for every single exam that I've taken in college. And to be completely honest, I didn't really study other than that. It allows your brain to process it when people say sleep on it, like it's a legit thing. Your brain processes it and internalizes it while you sleep. Doing that and then studying 20 minutes before because then it's completely fresh in your mind. All the terms you literally just looked at, since you're just taking the test immediately after, you're gonna remember everything that you just saw. Next tip in note taking. A lot of people debate on whether you should write your notes out or type your notes out. My golden rule is that if they give you the PowerPoint that you can pull up on your computer separate from the one that they display in front of the whole class, then you should handwrite your notes. In general, you should handwrite your notes because it allows your brain to actually process it and makes you remember things even better and internalize them and think about them. Whenever you can, handwrite your notes. However, if they don't give you the PowerPoint to pull up on your computer so that you can go kind of at your own pace when you're taking notes, then I would recommend typing because it's more important to get all the information down than to 
internalize it by writing. So a couple other random tips for studying and for class and succeeding in school. Definitely sit next to someone on your first day of class. Find somebody that looks relatively friendly. Just ask if they minded if you sit there. Sit down, make a little bit of conversation, ask them what their name is, and then just say, can I get your Snapchat or your number so that if we ever have any questions about the class or we miss class and didn't know what's going on or we don't know what the homework is that we could text each other. I cannot tell you how horrible it is when you're in a 300 person lecture, you don't know anybody and you forget what the homework was or something like that and you can't text anybody. Make sure that you make a friend in every class that you have. Another tip I have is to start using office hours early. I know a lot of people are going to tell you this and you're like, yeah, well, you know, I just, this doesn't apply to me or I don't want to do that or whatever. I think one of the reasons why I've done so well in my classes is because I've made that personal connection with my professor. One thing that you'll learn is that professors can do whatever they want. They can give you whatever grade they want no matter if you've done all the homework, if you got an F on the test or whatever. They have complete control over what grade you get. If they like you or they know you, they can fudge things a little bit. So if you go into office hours early and just introduce yourself, ask them one or two questions you have about the homework just so that they have your name and your face in their head, it will benefit you so much. Another tip I have to kind of get all that homework and all those extra assignments done that you're gonna have to do, if you have an hour or so break or any amount of break, find a place on campus where you can bring your computer and bring your homework and just get it done in between classes classes. If you go home in between your classes, you're going to take a nap. People are going to be like, no, I, I won't do you will okay by staying on campus you're going to force yourself to stay awake and to get that stuff done so that way when you're done with classes for the day you don't have to worry about going home and blocking out some time to do all this homework when you get done from class your friends are going to text you and say hey let's go get food or hey let's go shopping or hey let's uh Pre-game, get your homework done out of the way in those blocks of time you have in between your classes. It will free you up to do things after your classes are done. So one thing that people might wonder with that last question is where do I sit? It's a really crowded campus, I will admit. If it's around lunchtime, you probably won't find a space in the lair to sit. All the tables are completely filled up and it's really intimidating because all the football players and the basketball players are like watching you when you walk by. It's really kind of scary. So I wrote down a list of a couple other places that that you can go to to study or just sit down and get your work done. So at the Barnes & Noble Starbucks, they have tables inside and outside, which usually is a pretty quiet place. There's a restaurant in the lair called Hatfields, although I think they're changing the name this year. Regardless, there's a restaurant in there that you can use your dining dollars and stuff at. It's right as you walk in the front entrance of the lair on your right. It usually has like a ton of tables. They might say that you're not allowed to sit in there unless you're actually buying lunch, but just don't listen to them. I've never never had anyone come up to me and tell me to leave or ask me if I'm getting lunch but if they do just say yeah I'm like studying and then I'm gonna get lunch in like an hour that has been my go-to place to study because it's so quiet there's so much room the chairs are comfy the tables are big and it's never crowded there's also a bunch of benches in front of Woodburn which are not usually taken up so if you want a nice view and it's a nice day I would definitely recommend you sit out there and then the last place I would say you can sit is anywhere in the B&E which is the business and economics building it's right next to Woodburn kind of they have so much seating in there they have these really nice armchairs with desks and then they have like actual tables definitely recommend staying on campus another little tip I wanted to throw in here is that as far as housing goes for sophomore year I know y'all are probably like I should not be thinking about this like I'm not even moved into college yet but I want to just put it in your brain as far as housing goes for your sophomore year people get housing done very very early in the game you should be looking for housing for your sophomore year around mid-september early october you should sign something before the first semester is over i just want to tell you guys because i think it's better to be stressed out but like get that shit done than find out that everything is taken up in like february so my last category is kind of about clothes the first tip i have for you is to always wear layers in morgantown because number one classroom temperature 
temperatures are so irregular and I don't know why they haven't figured it out yet you'll go into one classroom and it'll be absolutely freezing and then you'll go into another one and it'll feel like you're suffocating so just wear layers because it's gonna be different everywhere you go even if it's 90 degrees outside you might be freezing 10 minutes into class and also just walking to your classes is gonna make you really sweaty I'm only saying that because you'll probably walk up like three hills to get to your class or to get back home there's a lot of hills in Morgantown you're gonna sweat. Another tip I have is to invest in a pair of shoes that has good traction. You will eat shit on some surface somewhere on campus. And not like the good kind eat shit, like eat shit pit, but like the kind where you fall on your face. WVU does not cancel for icy conditions, slushy conditions, snow, they do not cancel very often, but if it snows a couple inches, they will not cancel school and you will still have to walk to class. Invest in a pair of shoes that has good traction. That's all I have for this video. Sorry it was super random. I just tried to write down like all the most random things I could think of that I needed to tell you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Also, if you do not follow me on Instagram, please do. It's gonna be right here. Go follow me and make sure to subscribe if you liked this video and wanna see more of it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Appreciate all of your support. Also, thank you for 300 subscribers. That's crazy to me. I will see you in the next one.